But since we were torn away from you, brothers, for a short time in person, not in heart, we endeavored the more eagerly and with great desire to see you face to face. Because we wanted to come to you, I, Paul, again and again, but Satan hindered us. For what is our hope or joy or crown of boasting before our Lord Jesus at his coming? Is it not you? Therefore, when we could bear it no longer, we were willing to be left behind at Athens alone. And we sent Timothy, our brothers and God's co-worker in the gospel of Christ, to establish and exhort you in faith that no one be moved by these afflictions. For you yourselves know that we are destined for this. For when we were with you, we kept telling you beforehand that we were to suffer affliction, just as it has come to pass. And just as you now, just as you know, for this reason, when I could bear it no longer, I sent to learn about your faith for fear that somehow the tempter had tempted you and our labor would be in vain. But now that Timothy has come to us from you and has brought us the good news of your faith and love and reported that you always remember us kindly and long to see us as we long to see you. For this reason, brothers, in all our distress and affliction, we have been com comforted about you through your faith. For now we live if you are standing fast in the Lord. For what thanksgiving can we return to God for you? For all the joy and that we feel for your sake before our God. As we pray most earnestly night and day that we may see your face to face and supply what is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all as we do for you. So that we, he may establish your hearts blameless and holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. God is good. All the time? Amen. You just declared that out of your mouth for the glory of God. Because we gather each Sunday to give God the glory that is due to His name. Uh, this sermon is basically about it. It's not about you. It's about Him. Um, and so, it wasn't... Uh, how do I just want to say this? I was working one time with two... Uh, two men in discipleship um, and kind of going through a, a, a leadership development um, with them. And one attended Freedom in Christ Fellowship and the other attended another church. Um, but I was watching just something happen with these two men, something that went far beyond. So I was with the pastor of the other man and I said to him, like, I wonder what God's going to do with these people. Like, wouldn't it be awesome if they planted the church? And the pastor said, well, not my guy. He, he's my best guy. I ain't giving him up. And I said, well, well guess what? I'm, I'm giving my guy up. And then, to his credit, he did say, well, God would have to clearly speak that to me. But I also, it was uh, Daniel Miller. Daniel Miller, for some that don't know, because he's been in retirement for some time, uh, was the founder and planner of this church. Um, and the pastor of this church for many years. Um, well, when I became pastor, Daniel wanted to leave to, to allow me to, to get the leadership, but I said, no, <laughs> I'm too unchurched. Right? I don't know the organizational system, so you need to stay. Well, then he said, all right, but, but if I stay, and this isn't exactly how it happened, but it makes for a good story. But if I stay, <laughs> if I stay, what's my job description? And I said, well, it's the same as mine. It's to find my replacement. Um, and, and I say that not because I'm, I plan to leave. I, I don't say that because I'm looking um, to get a new job anytime soon. I say that because the idea that we pour into somebody is so that we can give our best. Um, and sometimes giving our best means taking a back seat. Um, or it means allowing something to, 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 to go that's in your life that you may want or hold on to. We have a lot to cover in these verses, but really we don't. I mean, I mean that was a lot. You guys did an excellent job of reading. Um, and and, and I, when we look at that whole thing, I see this idea of Paul 
giving up his best. And that best was a man named Timothy. Um, so we're going to read this, but I really don't think it's going to be um, in full HD unless you go home and read Acts chapter 17. And when you go home and you read Acts chapter 17 in light of this chapter, it just pops. Um, so that's hopefully, uh, and I gave you that assignment in the beginning when I did the introduction to Thessalonians. So, so raise your hands. How about, no, I'm not going to do that to you. So Paul raises up a church, and whenever a church is raised up, uh, problems come in. And so what happened was is persecutions began, and trials began, and because of these trials, this church in Thessalonians w- was left abandoned because Paul had to flee at night. Paul, Timothy, and Silas, they all had to just get out there. And the way Paul expresses what he had to do at that moment uh, for fear for his life to get out to avoid this trouble that would hinder his walk was to leave. And the way he expresses it is he says, but since we were torn away from you, brothers, for a short time, in person, not in heart. We endeavor more eagerly with great desire to see you face to face because we want to come to you. I, Paul, again and again, but Satan hindered us. For what is our hope or joy or crown of boasting before our Lord Jesus at His coming? Is it not you? For you are our glory and joy. Now when you read that, I want you to hear a love letter. I want you to hear love language. I want you to hear that Paul's expression to this church is, man, I was torn away from you. It is not what I wanted. I wanted to come to you, but Satan hindered me. I endeavor more eagerly to see you face to face. They didn't have cell phones. <laughs> you know, and you think snail mail today was slow. <laughs> but this is love language. Because sometimes, in order to do what's right in the moment, we have to do what maybe we don't necessarily want to do. And isn't that the Christian call? To constantly give up ourselves or give up our best when we would be more comfortable to keep or to hold on? Paul describes this as being torn away. He's a very young church. He doesn't know what's going to happen. He has to leave. And you know what I hear in this letter? I hear a little bit of guilt. I hear a little bit of, this isn't what I wanted to do. Maybe what I started, I didn't complete. I wonder if failure was an emotion that Paul felt or regret. But what happened was he moved to Berea, and soon after he got to Berea, he had to leave there as well. Um, But when he left Berea, he left. Uh, Timothy and Silas behind to continue to work. And then he goes to Athens, and in Athens, Timothy rejoins him. And he says, Therefore, when we could bear it no longer, where we were willing to be left behind at Athens alone, and we sent Timothy, our brother, and God's co-worker in the gospel to establish and exhort your faith. As believers in Christ, we are a delight and a joy and a crown to our God. And here Paul is, and he gets reunited with Timothy, but he has this this struggle. And he writes this love letter, and what's he saying? I'm going to send Timothy to you. Therefore, when I could bear it no longer. Ministry is, is, is difficult. 
It's a struggle. There's nothing worse than when you feel guilty about not completing a work. And then you, you lose sleep. And you think, oh, if I could have did it this way, if I, if I would have, if I could have. But, but, if, but if I... And, and, and you lose sleep and worry and doubt and failure consumes you. When therefore we could bear it no longer, I gotta do something. Something needs to be done. Because there's a fear that somehow something ain't going right. I started this. I started this church of new believers. And then there's a grief and a fear and a wonder. Did you ever ask yourself after doing something, could I have did more? Did I do the right thing? Did you ever lose sleep because of those decisions? We can all get caught up in the coulda, woulda, shouldas, what ifs. But then what? But then what? The main reason Paul is going through this is because he has a deep love and concern for the people in Thessalonica, namely the church that he helped plant. And that no one be moved. He's, he's, he's got this. He wants to send Timothy to exhort them in the faith. Therefore, that no one be moved by these afflictions. For you yourself know that you were destined for this. For when we were with you, we kept telling you beforehand that we were to suffer afflictions just as it has come to pass and just as you, as you know. For this reason, when I could bear it no longer, I sent to learn about your faith for fear that somehow the tempter had tempted you and our labor would be in vain. Coulda, woulda, shoulda, if now I'm sending. Because I, there's a fear. There's a fear that what I started, the enemy is going to come in and take. Now, he could have renounced that fear and said, there is now no fear in the kingdom of God. I am not supposed to fear and they'll be okay. I'm going to trust God that everything's going to be okay. Or he can back up his fear with an action. And when he backs up his fear with his action, he does something about it and he sends and he gives. He understands that ministry is difficult. He said, I, I wrote about this. Do you know why? Because Jesus told me this. Christianity is not comfortable. It's stretching. We're going to be stretched until we die. And then we're in the image of God in Christ Jesus. But until then, it's not meant for us to be comforted. Or comfortable. We are supposed to be comforted. Don't get me wrong. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. I said that wrong. But Jesus suffered for the sake of the gospel so that we, His people, should not be moved when trials, tribulations, and affliction come to us. We are called to build upon the rock. Part of what we do here on Sunday is we're building upon a rock. We're building our faith so that it is more secure that when the storms and trials and tribulations come into our life, we are built on Jesus Christ, the firm foundation, the rock, and we won't diminish. We will stand tall. But, but Paul wonders if Satan's going to destroy this church that he planted. Because Satan says, for anyone, Jesus says, for anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches it away. What has been sown in the heart, that is what's sown along the path. And if you're in this a while, you have experienced this. You have experienced the work of pouring into somebody only to see that seed snatched away. 
and the person is far off worse than when they began. And so I just want to take, a, take us in a different direction today. And I want to take us in the direction of giving our best for the sake of the gospel. But now, when Timothy has come to us, he has brought us the good news of your faith and love and reported that you always remember us kindly and long to see us as we long to see you. For this reason, brother, in all our distress and affliction, we have been comforted about you through your faith. Again, a love letter, an expression of faith the kind of love that God calls each and us to have for one another. The kind of love that God gives us so that we can demonstrate that love for one another to a dying world. Paul was restricted. He couldn't go. And he gave his best. He sent Timothy he sent Timothy to complete the work that he started, the mission field that he started. He had a Timothy to send to do this work because of his concern. Because of his concern, because of his worry, the worry that builds over time until you have to do something. And he, he, he has to do this so he can sleep. And I, I'm, I'm making that up, of course. I don't know. I, I didn't get a chance to ask him. But, but that's kind of what I imagine. How do you rest? How do you rest when your thoughts are thinking, well, what I poured into this, Satan's now destroying. So I can't, but Timothy can. When he could bear it no longer. And this is what he says. This is who Timothy is to him. My true child in the faith. He also says this in, in Philippians about Timothy. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon. So he did this before, right? And so that you too may be cheered by the, or so that I too may be cheered by the news of you. For I have no one like him. I have no one like him who will be generally concerned for your welfare. Tim, Tim, Tim had a pastor's heart that was actually concerned for the people there. For they all seek their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. So it's not going to be easy. There's a heart of Isaiah. Go and the people won't understand. Right? And who's his heart concerned for? These stiff-necked people. But you know Timothy proven worth, how he is a son with a father. He has served with me in the gospel. Paul calls Timothy his son, his child in the faith. He wants this gospel to be lived out in Timothy, so he pours it out, and then he's willing to send Timothy. Timothy is also willing to go. It's a, it's a two-way street here. It's not just, okay, go, and he's going reluctantly, but he's willing to go. We are not built to hold back our best. We're not built that way because we're made in the image and likeness of God. We are not built to think that we are number one. I think a lot of problems exist today because that's what we walk in. The world revolves around us. And I think that causes more issues than anything. G.K. Chesterton said, how much larger your life it would be if yourself could become smaller in it. It's profound words. How much larger your life would be? As Jesus puts it, if you would just die to yourself. Because what God means for us is good. And with every ounce of our strength, our heart fights against that. We want to be big. We want to be larger 
than life. But how much larger our life would be if ourselves could become smaller in it. How do we give up our very best? And what does that mean to give up our very best? Some of us here today do not have opportunity to be around family. There's something that has caused the reaction in your life to have to give up family. So I want to appeal to that. And I want to appeal to that in a way of saying, sacrificing our time to get to know Jesus, to get the opportunity to be committed to Christ in a way that we have to sacrifice our family and our loved ones and our children. For a time being, we are giving up our best in order to grow closer to Christ. Because the the right thing at the wrong time is the wrong thing. And so often, we feel like, I can't give that up. But I will suffer if I don't. How do we give God our lives in surrender? How do we give up our best, our lives? And surrender. Now, there's some here who also lose sight of this and will give up family for the sake of ministry. So you can fall off the horse on both sides, as my brother in law would say. And yet, I would say the scripture says if you don't provide for your family, you're worse than an unbeliever. So, what is the first ministry that God gives us? Be fruitful and multiply. It is within our household. Every year for Easter Mennonite missions, I have to do an annual year in review. And every year there's this one question on there where I go, I'm off balance. I give my family more time than ministry. And every year I get a amen, keep it up. And I don't just get an amen, keep it up from EMM. I get, it, I get it from Freedom in Christ Fellowship. And I also get it from my missional support team, right? So it's at everybody. I have never had one person say to me, stop doing what you're doing with your family because your church needs you more, right? And, and I'm not saying I don't do anything, but I'm just saying I, 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 I pour a little bit into that to give of my best. And what would that look like? What would that look like to raise somebody up in our lives so that we can send them so that they can go? And what better than somebody who's like thriving for Christ? When somebody who considers their life is smaller for the Gospel. What does that look like? Paul is concerned for this church that he has planted and he is giving up his very best. So how do you give up your time, your talents, and your treasures for your community, for your neighborhood, for your family, for your relationship to Jesus Christ, which is the chief. So when you sit down to have your quiet time, I know Sean don't like that word. If you sit down to have your, your, your quiet time, if you sit down to read your Bible, you're sacrificing your time. You're sacrificing your best to give to God. I, I want to plant that seed. Because I know there's many people here that don't have the quiet time. Or don't have the time to sit down and read the Bible. Uh, my, I have other things that, that are more important to me. But if you're willing to give up your best, like Paul gave up Timothy, that includes your devotion to God 
above your devotion to something else, to something other than. Do you know where Paul learned this from? To give up his very best? God, who gave up his son. Right? For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave us Jesus. And Jesus gave up his life because the Father desired that. Because of the Father's love for you and for me. Jesus was willing to be obedient to the point of death. Even death on the cross. God gave his best for us. I don't know what heaven's like. Some of y'all are going to get there before me. You can send me a letter or something, right? I don't know what heaven's like, but I know enough that my faith is placed in Jesus Christ so that I can enjoy Him for all eternity. And I know with that faith, with that faith, that if Jesus left that, which is unlawful for Paul to speak about, to consider himself as nothing and come down as a servant, that's love. He gave up something. God, the creator of heaven and earth and everything that is in it, nothing was made without Jesus. And he gave up his life so that I can give up mine. Think about that. Because without Jesus giving up his life so that I can give up mine, I would stay in my selfish, righteous attitude. And somehow I would continue to sit on my throne and desire the worship of men. But Jesus died. God, in my place, so that I can die to that. So he says, deny yourself, take up your cross. Denying myself is that very thing. That denying myself the very right to be God. And if I could follow the example of God in this one area, it would be the call to give up my very best. Early on in my relationship with Deborah, um, she had been all over the world and has uh, an opportunity with EMM to do a thing called Yes Teams. And for eight months, she was out. And for six of those months, she lived, lived in Croatia. And, uh, and and I, at that point, was never anywhere. Um, and and uh, the thought of my children ever going anywhere, because I, I, I want them forever. <laughs> right? I, I want them out of the house eventually. Um, but, but within driving distance, right? And, and, and I, I got to understand that most missionary children, not most, I'm making that up, right? End up becoming missionaries in these other parts. So I was like, well, I don't want my kids to ever go anywhere. But Deborah had experienced all this. And so Deborah's like, you know, when our kids get to that age, we're definitely sending them on missions trips. And, and I, was, I, I wasn't willing to give up my very best. So I didn't like that idea. Um, I didn't like that idea until I experienced missions um, and understood the deep value of it and got to the point where they are my very best and I would send them. Um, I would send them. You know, what, do, what are we holding on to that we wouldn't be willing to send? I have a note here to call the children back, but I'm not thinking that's going to happen as I saw them all run out to the playground. So... The nursery, okay. You can you can start that. They went out too, okay. Shane, I need you to edit that. Okay. <laughs> for now, we live if we are standing fast in the Lord. For what thanksgiving can we return to God for you, for all the joy that we feel for your sake before God? as we pray most earnestly night and day that we may see you face to face and supply what is lacking in your faith. 
The church is called to give up ourselves. It's called to pray. It's called to, to release our time, talent, and treasures, everything we have for the sake of the gospel and the call of Jesus. We demonstrate this through action. And sometimes that means sacrificing your time for other people. And you know what? It's happening. I am so happy. So last week, there was a, a bunch of students from the Lebanon Rescue Mission and a bunch of students from Jubilee Ministries. And we went to Crawl's Church and we ripped out carpet. Uh, then I involuntarily volunteered half of them to go to Sean's house <laughs> to help move. And there was a bunch of people there. There was a whole nother crew. And then we just heard the report of VBS, all the volunteers that came out here um, to help. We thanked Elsie for the plant sale that took some volunteers. There's a whole bunch of stuff coming up we're going to be signing up for. Hint, hint. Um, <laughs> but there's Bible studies, there's community events, there's devotions around the table. When we take steps to giving God our lives, what we're essentially saying is, I'm giving my very best. I'm giving it up. I'm giving up my time, my talent, and my treasures, the very best, so that I can follow Christ. As somebody who graduated from Jubilee Ministries Christian Discipleship Program, I had an awareness, a self-awareness, that this was a gift that I got to take one year out of my life to learn about Jesus. And I thought, I remember thinking, the world is not offering that. I remember I worked for a company one time and I relapsed and the company came to me and said, we know you're doing drugs and what we're willing to do is give you 28 days in a program here. But then we want you right back at work. Day 29, you're here. <laughs> the world's not giving you one year where you don't have to worry about the effects of the world so that you can learn how to give your very best back to Jesus Christ. That is what we're called to do. The mindset of God toward us is that He sent His Son into the world not to be served, but to serve. And Romans 8.32 says, who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he also not with him graciously give us all things? Now may the God of our, may God and our Father himself and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way to you. Paul wants to get back. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all. This is why he's sending Timothy. He understands that when you give it all back to God, God does something with it. So the Lord, and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all as we do for you so that He may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all the saints. Lord, I thank You, Father, that because of Your sacrifice, we can give our best. That You see us as blameless in Your Son. And that will be experienced in the fullness when you come back, Lord Jesus. The payout for our sacrificial love, Lord, is that we can be devoted to you because we know that you will come back again and restore us, that we can rest in a complete shalom peace that you have established for us. We give you glory and honor and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.